I've used both Elementor and Shopify to build online businesses. And while at first the two appear to be similar, they actually have very different functionalities. Basically, Elementor is best suited for small, local, and service-based businesses because it's a plugin for building and designing websites. Shopify, on the other hand, is an e-commerce platform, mainly used for creating and managing online stores, which is why it's a great option for dropshipping businesses, online retailers, and other niche stores. But to really answer the question of which one is best for your business, I'll go over the features of both and then compare the two so that by the time I'm finished, you'll know exactly which one is right for you. And having extensively used both Elementor and Shopify for a few years now, I've also found some downsides to be aware of before choosing which one to go with. Now, Elementor is a plugin for WordPress that has a lot of flexibility when it comes to designing websites. By the way, if you're not familiar with WordPress, it's basically an engine for building websites and approximately 43% of all websites on the internet are created using WordPress. And when I started my first online business, which was a blog, I started researching options for a website builder. I knew I wanted something that would let me customize the website as much as possible to fit my niche and brand. And I was looking for an option that was easy to use so I could launch it as soon as possible. It was actually a friend of mine who recommended Elementor to me. And since at that point I had some experience using Elementor for some freelance work I'd done for another company, I decided to give it a try. I didn't know everything, but I did have a bit of an edge because I did a little work on someone else's website. But what I didn't know was pretty easy to learn, especially because there were and still are so many free tutorials out there. So I signed up for Elementor and got right to it. The first thing I did was create the basic pages for my website. And once that was finished, I used Elementor's drag and drop editor to move things around and adjust the layout and design. Something that I really found helpful when using Elementor was the real-time editing feature because it allowed me to edit the blog without having to constantly switch between editing and preview modes. It saved me a lot of time. Also, I was able to add motion effects and animations to some widgets, which made my blog a lot more visually engaging, which, as the data showed, drove viewer engagement way up. And once everything was in place and I was satisfied with the results, I published the blog. And in the end, Elementor turned out to be exactly what I needed to create and maintain a blog that looked really good and also ranked well. And because Elementor comes with so many tools, widgets, and themes to play around with, the process also turned out to be pretty fun, which is always a plus when you're working, of course. Okay, so after a while, the blog started to take off. I hired a manager and a few employees to handle the day-to-day -day aspects of it, and I was on the lookout for another business to start that I could scale. And at that point, which was about four or so years ago, I heard a lot about e-commerce, specifically dropshipping, and I was really curious to see if I could pull it off. So I took a couple of courses on Udemy, researched a profitable niche, and sampled a couple of products. And after that, the next step was to create a website. And in the end, I decided to go with Shopify instead of Elementor for this. And I'm going to get into the specifics of why in a second. But before I do, I just wanted to say that by now I've used Shopify to build, manage, and consult for several online shops. And because of its versatility and the fact that it was specifically designed for e-commerce, I can confidently say that Shopify is one of the most popular platforms for building and managing e-commerce businesses. Okay, so when I initially start an e-commerce store on Shopify, I like to start by browsing through the available themes, which include around 70 free options in addition to around 60 or so paid ones. And for my first store, I ended up going with the focal theme because it had a sort of contemporary and sleek look, which complemented the travel tech products that I was looking to sell. Then I used a few different product management tools to create product listings, categorize them into specific collections, and add titles, descriptions, images, and prices. For this, I tried AppScenic as well as AutoDS and a few other ones, but that's for another video. Anyway, the entire process was really smooth and all the options were easy to navigate. Next, I chose Shopify's payment gateway, set shipping rates, and optimized the website. Okay, after I'd finished setting everything up, which did take quite a bit of time, especially when I was first learning, I was able to test the mobile responsiveness using my phone and my wife's iPad to make sure that the website looked just as good on different devices as it did on my computer screen. I went over all the details of my website a bunch of times, like design, functionality, the checkout process, and the email marketing tools that I'd integrated. 
Now, I'm usually a bit of a perfectionist and I knew that it would hurt me here. So I knew that I could change things after my store was launched. So I just made sure that everything was functional and looked good enough for me, my wife, and a few friends. And I decided to just go ahead and launch it. I figured that I could continue to adjust it as I went along. And when I did launch my shop, I had to learn about many other features, which ended up being really, really useful. Things like discounts, gift cards, reports on sales and performance, as well as inventory management and automatic tax calculations. And since Shopify has so many features and integrations, it was much easier to build a website with them for a sales slash e-commerce business than to start from scratch with WordPress, not to mention that it was much, much cheaper than having to hire a web developer. Now, Although Elementor and Shopify each serve different purposes, there are still a few overlaps between the two. The first thing that I noticed is that both are designed in a way that can be really beneficial to both beginners and advanced users. For example, both of them don't require any coding knowledge because they both have a bunch of ready-made templates. But for more advanced users, both offer the option to incorporate code for more customization. I also noticed the designs on both of them are really responsive and adapt to different screen sizes, making the websites compatible with a bunch of different devices pretty much automatically. And then there's the support aspect of both Elementor and Shopify. They both have active communities and offer support through different forums, tutorials, and both free and paid educational guides in addition to standard customer service. Now, when it comes to differences, it really boils down to the main purpose of each one. Elementor is better when it comes to the design and aesthetics of a website, making it a great option for blogs, portfolios, and businesses focused on building a lifestyle brand. And Shopify is centered mostly around building e-commerce businesses and is an excellent choice for people looking to establish and manage online stores. And while you technically can do all these things on both platforms, you wouldn't be getting the best features that each has to offer by doing so. And in terms of cost, both Elementor and Shopify come with different plans to choose from and offer free trials. Starting with Elementor, it costs anywhere between 10 and 50 bucks, depending on how many websites you're looking to build and the number of monthly visitors that you expect to your website. For just one basic website, Elementor costs only around 10 bucks a month. And for a website that needs more storage and has more monthly visitors, it costs around 20 bucks a month. If you're looking to build three websites, it costs around 23 bucks a month. And then for 10 websites, it's just about 50 bucks a month. So if you decide that Elementor is the right option for you, I'd recommend using the link I included for a discount off your first year, which you wouldn't be able to get by going straight to their website. And as for Shopify, the basic plan costs around 40 bucks a month, comes with two staff accounts and basic reports. And a staff account is basically needed for any employees, designers, or partners to be able to access your website. By the way, there are different levels of access that can be set for each person, so privacy is not really an issue here. Then there's the Shopify plan, which was made for small businesses as opposed to self-employed people. It includes five staff accounts as well as detailed reports on sales and customers, and it goes for around a hundred bucks a month. And the next option, which is for larger businesses, is the advanced plan, which costs about 400 bucks a month for 15 staff accounts, as well as custom report builders. Now, there's also the Shopify Plus plan, which includes features specifically for really high volume businesses. But if you're like me or you're just starting out, I wouldn't even think about that one until you're doing huge volumes and need a large team. And by the way, if you do decide to go with Shopify, you'll be able to get any of these plans for just a buck per month for the first three months, only views our discounted link in the description below. Now, I hope I didn't make it sound like either of them are perfect because there are definitely a few downsides with both Elementor and Shopify. So because there's so much room for customization with Elementor, it can cause the website to take a while to load. This happens especially when implementing complex designs with too many elements or animations. And of course, that in turn affects SEO ranking and can potentially drive traffic away from your website. The simplest way to solve this would be to either use smaller images and fewer animations or compress the file so that it doesn't negatively impact loading speed as much. Another thing to mention here is that if at any point in the future you do decide that you want to transfer your website from Elementor to a different website builder or content management system, you might be facing some challenges. And this is because Elementor has a unique system for organizing and displaying content that might not be compatible with the platform that you want to switch to. And as a result, you may need to reformat and manually adjust the designs, which can be really time consuming and annoying, especially after you spent all that time doing it in the first place. 
And when it comes to Shopify, the functionality is great, but the customization options, especially the free ones, can be slightly limiting. I found this to be especially true regarding the checkout page, because while I was able to switch fonts and colors to match my brand, I wasn't able to make significant changes in the layout or add custom fields. And while this isn't a big deal for most businesses, there are still ways around it if you want, like using third-party apps or upgrading to one of Shopify's more premium plans. And finally, some people mention that they don't appreciate that Shopify has transaction fees on top of processing fees, even though it's a pretty common industry practice. Personally, I understand that Shopify has to make some money, and honestly, it really doesn't bother me. And while the charges are low, it's still something that's better to know about ahead of time, especially if you have a business with smaller margins. Also, there are some ways to mitigate this, either by using Shopify's own payment gateway or by going with a plan that costs more because the transaction fees for Shopify's upgraded plans are lower the higher you go. So as you can see, both Elementor and Shopify are not entirely perfect. Now, having said all that, would I still recommend them? Well, absolutely. Besides the few downsides that I mentioned, Elementor is an incredibly customizable platform and a great way to build websites. And with their drag and drop interface, I was really able to customize the design. And Shopify is an extremely useful platform with many features and tools to build and manage e-commerce stores. For me, I ended up sticking with Shopify. And one of the reasons was their inventory management tools, which I found to be super helpful for my business because they prevented products from overselling and sent automatic updates when stock levels went low. And to decide which one is best for you specifically, the main thing I'd recommend considering is your business model and the nature of the products or services that you offer. Although Elementor and Shopify both support many, many different kinds of businesses, the key is to go for one that specializes in the kind of business that you're looking to build. That being said, I'd sum it up by saying that Elementor is best for content-based models, service-based businesses, and personal branding. And Shopify is tailored more for e-commerce, retail, wholesale, and even print-on-demand and dropshipping models. But either way, they both have free trials, so I highly recommend taking advantage of them. And like I mentioned before, if you do decide to go ahead with either Elementor or Shopify, if you use the links below, they'll automatically apply discounts that you wouldn't be able to get by going straight to their website, so that should save you a bit more money to start off. So just to wrap things up, I've got to say that I'm still a big fan of both. I continue to use Elementor for my blog and Shopify for all my dropshipping stores. Why? Because they've both been absolute game changers for me. They've saved me a ton of time and money, and I guess you'll just have to trust me when I say the value that I've gotten out of these tools far outweigh the initial costs. And so that's going to be it for today. I really hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, hit that like button and subscribe for more. And like I mentioned before, if you want to try either Elementor or Shopify out, check out the links in the description. Also, feel free to leave any questions in the comments below, and I'll do my best to try and answer them as quickly as I can. Guys, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.